In this video, we are going to be looking at this vi- go in. <sighs> Vital part of the game. We're going to be looking at techniques and swings that you can use, so the next time you are faced with a wedge shot, you can stiff it nice and close, just as that example showed. So the first thing to understand is that with wedges and the shots that I'm talking about here, I'm talking about a pitch shot which rises up in the air, travels over 50, 60 yards to about 130 yards, depending on the wedges that you're using. We want it to be loaded with backspin. We want it to be loaded with accuracy. We want to be trying to get this ball as close as possible. With pitching as well, something which certainly when I was giving lessons is to really try and emphasize this is a short technique. It's something which you have control over, especially if you compare it to the driver swing. Putting is the best example of this, where there's absolutely no reason you can't be a fantastic putter. You know, physical limitations might stop you swinging it like Rory. That's the same for everyone. But with a short put, with a wedge shot, these are controlled, slower actions. And therefore, the potential and the opportunity to become really good at this part of the game is very profound. This is where we're gonna start with the weapons that you are using. I currently carry four wedges in the bag. This picture wedge is obviously with the set, and these three are my specialist Vokey clubs. I use these particular lofts because they help me cover an array of different distances. Club gapping is something that we do need to get into in this video. We're gonna to touch upon it lightly. If you do wanna have another video about in-depth club gapping, get down into those comments and let us know. The first top tip really of this video, following on from that talk about control and about how you have the potential to be a really good wedge player, is I very rarely recommend players take full swings at their wedges. If you wanna generate the maximum amount of backspin, Absolutely, it's a great way to go. However, if you want control over distances, we need to start to understand and learn different lengths of swing. So I have here 96 yards, and I know that with my 54 degree wedge, this is pretty much just a half swing back and a half swing through. And we are gonna get into what constitutes a half swing in a moment. So the first thing we're gonna do is set up this alignment stick drill. Now, as you can see, we have a feet alignment stick. You, I would prefer you use an alignment stick, it's just simpler, it's more visual. You can use clubs as well if you want to. But this alignment stick is gonna represent my body aim, but these two alignment sticks are the most important in this particular drill, because they are representing target lines. So through the ball, and then into the screen of my beautiful simulator here and then down to the flag. Now, the reason that this is important is because we're talking about stiffing wedges. Accuracy is obviously a massive part of that. And because you're hitting a wedge, you're generating so much backspin that generally speaking, the amount of curvature that you're gonna be able to generate on this ball is quite low. So if we can get the ball starting out on a decent target line, it shouldn't, move too much to the left or the right, depending on face angle, but don't worry, we are gonna be getting onto that as well. So I'm just gonna get settled with 54 degree, obviously it's just a half swing, ball center of the stance, and I just wanna be hitting this ball over the lead alignment stick. If I hit it over the lead alignment stick, I know it's gonna be traveling straight down towards the target. Fingers crossed. Straight over this first one. Check, swing. nipped it as well. Do it for me this time. Oh. Oh, one of these, one of these is gonna go in. Got a good feeling today. Nice lazy swings this morning. Okay, not too bad. Oh, that starting line was bang on. Getting close again, you know what? I reckon. If you've not subscribed already and you hit that subscribe button right now, I'm gonna hold one before the end of this video. So let's say you've been using this drill, you're managing to get that ball started on target line. The next thing we really need to try and ensure as much as possible is gonna be a centered strike of the wedge. Now, if you wanna generate spin on your wedges, 
a center strike is going to be essential. Also, other things like clean grooves and all the rest of it that we can get into. But for this particular part of the video, we are just going to be focusing on striking this club around the center line of the face. So the alignment sticks are helping with target line and starting direction of the ball. And now I've put down a little Tommy Fleetwood-esque drill. This is a gate drill, okay? So we've got a T on the outside of the ball and we have another T on the inside of the ball. In theory, this is pretty simple. We just want the club to be passing in between the gate. If we can get the club passing in between the gate, then the center of the club should be exposed to the ball. And this is something which takes focus a little bit away from technique and again focuses the mind on just trying to pass the club through a certain point. Quite similar to these alignment stick drills, we're not working on anything too technical, we're just trying to square the club face up to that lead alignment stick. Okay, let's try and get this club passing through the center of this gate and starting out over the alignment stick. Ooh, not too bad. Okay, through the gate. Come on. Mm. Go. Just misreading it. I'm presuming you've already hit the subscribe button, so maybe it's a like button you need to hit as well just to tip me over the edge. So now I've picked up the rear alignment stick and I'm gonna use this as another drill to add into our little session that we're having here. I'm just gonna place it along the inside of the grip, like so, so it extends the shaft outwards. Because what we wanna to do to really secure a solid wedge strike is yes, we want the ball starting out on the target line. We want the center of the club to be in contact with the ball at impact but we also want a slightly descending blow on the golf ball. So around the green on short shots, we kind of still want a slightly descending blow, but that club head kind of overtakes the hand. We can use the bounce a little bit more. With these particular shots, we want a little bit of shaft lean and impact. We want the club to be moving down through the ball and taking a nice crisp divot. If we get an alignment stick on the inside of the grip and then take your setup, you'll notice how the alignment stick just sits on that lead hip. Now, if I was to do the half swing again, move through the ball, I wanna just try and ensure that that alignment stick is clear of the lead hip at the point of impact. Club is moving through the gate and the ball will be setting off along that target line. Now you can hit shots like this and it's quite a nice feedback drill as well. If you're kind of flipping those wrists, the alignment stick will whip and impact the side. But I probably prefer just to take some practice swings with this type of drill, just to get the feeling. Once you've done that, you can take that alignment stick away, get that set up position, half swing through the gate, that shaft lean impact. I need to hold one of these shots, my God. Oh, no. Ah, oh, that's annoying. And there you have it. So I clipped away the tee, which was on the toe of the club. So that meant my club was more this way through impact. And you can see where I've hit that shot onto the heel section of the club. Using drills like this, and the reason why I like to use setups like this, is it gives you feedback. So instantaneously, I know that my club was moving too far out to the right there at impact, or it was just approaching on too out of an angle. Again, I, I used the video to just check back and see what I was doing. I'd be able to tell a little bit more, but feedback drills are so important if you want to try and understand what's happening. So last up, and again, we're touching quite briefly on this about swing lengths and wedge gapping. So for this length of shot, I'm having half a swing back and about half a swing through with the 54. I know through experience that this is gonna get me towards that 96 yards. And also with my other wedges, I've hit enough shots now to know what my different swing lengths will do. But that is the first thing, if you haven't already, to try and figure out. 
can you develop three different swing lengths? There are a few different ways of thinking about swing length. My personal preference is to think of a half swing, a three quarter swing, and then a full swing. And that's kind of denoted by the position of the lead arm, left arm for a right-handed golfer. You can also think about this as a clock face, so swinging to nine, half, 10, 12 with the left arm. It doesn't really matter. As long as you can differentiate between swing lengths, that's what's important. The further back you take it, the more potential power that you have coming through the ball, and therefore the more potential distance. I've already pointed out this half swing, so it should be pitching around 90. And rolling out a little bit more. Tell you what, it's got another chance, you know. What is happening here? Now, on my three quarter swing, I'm going to be looking at this to go probably just over 100 yards. Oh, not too bad. 102, 105. Wow. And then with a the full swing, Probably going to be looking about 115. Looks like I've gained a few yards. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, around 110. Oh, spinning back onto the green. Oh, I'd love to see it. Now, as mentioned, I can do a full video on gapping. You know, with all the new clubs that I've got this year, I need to go through that as well. So maybe that's something that we can do together. Okay, everybody, hopefully you've enjoyed this Swing Quest video. That's giving you a bit more information about stiffing those wedges. If you do want to continue improving your golf, make sure that you check out these Swing Quest videos here all around the wedges. And I think I've just got one more chance.